Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is 21 CFR Part 11, Subpart C, Electronic Signatures. Electronic signatures are equivalent to handwritten signatures. Signed document has authenticity for the activity carried out and recorded. It is the objective evidence of the individual who is responsible for the content of the document. Handwritten signature is unique for its structure, number of strokes, angles, etc. It is a combination of several aspects and reflects several characteristics of the individual. In present day electronic era, similar uniqueness can be achieved by the system for electronic signatures equivalent to the handwritten signatures. Let us understand the requirements of 21 CFR part 11 subpart C. Let us see the prescription under section 11.100 general requirements. Each electronic signature shall be unique to one individual and shall not be reused by or reassigned to anyone else. This is the obvious requirement. Here uniqueness is important. Handwritten signatures are unique like a thumb impression and cannot be replicated. For example, if the handwritten signature is in two or three capital letters of your name, anybody would replicate it. It is not considered unique. Uniqueness is to identify the individual person without any element of doubt. Before an organization establishes, assigns, certifies or otherwise sanctions an individual's electronic signatures or any element of such electronic signature, the organization shall verify the identity of the individual. Identifying the individual for assigning the electronic signature for specific activity is a necessary requirement to establish capability and authority for the activity. The person identified thus will be a qualified person for that particular activity. Persons using electronic signatures shall prior to or at the time of such use certify to the agency that the electronic signatures in their system used on or after August 20, 1997 are intended to be the legally binding equivalent of traditional handwritten signatures. This is important. It is necessary to certify and communicate to the regulatory authorities on the list of persons who use electronic signatures as replacement to the handwritten signatures and the listed persons are legally bound for the activity performed. The FDA regulation in 21 CFR part 11 requirements is effective since August 20, 1997. So all electronic data along with electronic signatures must comply to this requirement. The guideline specifies how companies in FDA governed industries must handle electronic records and electronic signatures. This is equivalent to the handwritten ownership of the individual person on the recorded activity. Let us understand the requirements of section 11.200 
electronic signature components and controls electronic signatures that are not based upon biometrics shall have the following requirements the biometric signature is that signature that takes place in a face to face context biometric signature is equivalent to the handwritten signature thumb impression or iris recognition are also part of the biometrics these systems are generally used as a part of entry and exit procedures into controlled areas so other than these identification methods any other electronic method like passwords should have the following requirements employ at least two distinct identification components such as an identification code and password so there should be at least two components identification code and password are basic requirements you can have more such components for example for any net banking system you must log in with a user identification followed by password to access the account in some instances there may be a requirement to enter some alpha numeric captcha which keeps changing every time you access some sometimes it asks you to tick off that you are not a robo etc when an individual executes a series of signings during a single continuous period of controlled system access the first signing shall be executed using all electronic signature components subsequent signings shall be executed using at least one electronic signature component that is only executable by and designed to be used only by the individual note this carefully when the first time login is done into the system it is necessary to have more than one control the controls include user id and password subsequent recording simultaneously does not need to be used all identifications and passwords one confirmation code is adequate the individual responsible should not delegate the activity to others to enter the data using his or her user id and password the authorized individual is responsible for the electronic transaction in the system when an individual executes one or more signings not performed during a single continuous period of controlled system access each signing shall be executed using all of the electronic signature components so when once the individual logged out of the system for that period it is necessary to have all the login controls to login again be used only by the genuine owners be administered and executed to ensure that attempted use of an individual's electronic signature by anyone other than its genuine owner requires collaboration of two or more individuals the electronic signatures must be executed only by the authorized individual and cannot be shared with others for use in the electronic records you should be assigned with a unique alpha numeric and with special characters there are several methods used for such assignment the password assignment system may have a procedure to allow first half of the password to be selected by the user and the second half is generated by the password assigning system in a confidential way the second part is communicated in a confidential way unless 
combination of both halves of the password is incorporated there will not be any access to the system in certain password assignment procedures the entire password may be system generated in a random way and issued to the user in a sealed cover the user must make sure that the sealed cover is not tampered before opening for getting the password in case of any tampering it should be reported it is recommended not to record the password in any open system or in a notebook which is accessible for all it is necessary to by heart the password alternatively it can be stored with a specific logic known to the individual to retrieve the password if forgotten also if there is a requirement to review the data in the absence of the individual there should be a provision to handle with collaboration of two persons one of which should be the subject matter expert from information technology which is called it electronic signatures based upon biometrics shall be designed to ensure that they cannot be used by anyone other than their genuine owners these can be achieved by unique system for the user id and password structure touchless sign in systems facial recognition systems are available to achieve this biometric identification let us see the requirements under section 11.300 controls for identification codes and passwords persons who use electronic signatures based upon use of identification codes in combination with passwords shall employ controls to ensure their security and integrity such controls shall include the following the user id and password should be strong and not easy to guess the controls should include requirements to change the password every 60 or 90 days for safety reasons further there should be a control on number of attempts let us say if the wrong password is entered in three consecutive attempts to log in the system should be locked and should be opened again by the authorized persons after investigating into any possible falsification of data maintaining the uniqueness of each combined identification code and password such that no two individuals have the same combination of identification code and password obviously there should not be same password for two persons the strong password should have alpha numeric with special characters easy names like proper nouns names of persons or places etc or names like rose jasmine etc or continuous numbers should not be used in the password it should be random and very difficult to guess ensuring that identification codes and password issuance are periodically checked recalled or revised example to cover such events as password aging so there should be a pop up in the system after specified period to change the password with a new unique password following last management procedures to electronically deauthorize lost stolen missing or otherwise potentially compromised tokens cards and other devices that bear or generate identification code or password information and to issue temporary or permanent replacements using suitable rigorous controls this is another aspect recovery management in case of any loss of password 
there should be a detailed and controlled procedure to reissue the password this must be carried out by the subject matter expert in the information technology authority use of transaction safeguards to prevent unauthorized use of passwords and or identification codes and, and to detect and report to an immediate and urgent manner any attempts at their unauthorized use to the system security unit and is appropriate to organizational management transaction safeguards can be best handled by avoiding links from stranger unknown websites can steal the confidential information and damage the data in such cases there should be a provision to lock the system to avoid any further falsification it should be reported investigated and necessary corrective and preventive actions should be taken initial and periodic testing of devices such as tokens or cards that bear or generate identification code or password information to ensure that they function properly and have not been altered in an unauthorized manner these are necessary as system checks to ensure that the system is in proper working condition i hope that the explanation of subpart c of 21 CFR part 11 is understood well please check and ensure that your electronic system complies to these basic requirements through a documented and approved system it is important to have a policy on handling of electronic signatures including all the aspects described in the guideline along with this guideline the mhra guideline titled gxp data integrity guidance and definitions dated march 2018 is worth reading which provides elaborate requirements in line with 21 cfr part 11 guideline thanks for watching for more videos please do subscribe like and share also please leave a message in the comments box for any further support thank you